Let's give some quick picks here on those college football games. Do you think Pitt has what it takes to take down the Tar Heels and get into the top 25 and more broadly? Do you agree with me and what I have said for years now about the top 25? I mean, what are we doing here? And I know you're an Irish guy, but they lost to Northern Illinois. Yeah, I disagree with your premise here. So I'm excited to bring this up. Perfect, perfect. I think that it's I, I I saw the the splendid game um between Bama and Georgia. Dynamite stuff, obviously. Georgia lost the game and they probably still wind up in the playoff and all of that, but now things play out differently for them unless they catch them in the conference title game. I don't know. I will be I, I a lot of people declared like that game was still great and it wasn't by the old standard. They're still both going to make the playoff, but now Georgia really can't slip up. So um, I'm not taking Georgia to task, bar- barely losing to that team. But when you lose a game, by what other measure is there to rank teams? If you have a loss and other teams in the, it, it's the same thing as saying in the AFC standings, um, or or the or the NFC standings as a, as a for instance, Minnesota's undefeated. Well, they're right now number one, um, but we know the Packers are better than they are. Yeah, I know that. I know that they lost. I know the Vikings beat the Packers, but but we all understand over the course of a season who the better team is. It's that sort of logic that is being applied there. And I the here's here's the thing that makes me know I'm right. Is that if you took the brands off their helmets, you would not have an argument. Everybody's like, well, but you know, but we know that Georgia, we know Notre Dame is better than losing at home to Northern Illinois. It's like, yeah, we, yeah, we do. But the results are the results. And that's what we're playing off of. Bill Parcells is the one who said we are what our record says we are. Right. I mean, so if your record is that it's not like you can't overcome it, but I'm talking about the here and now, how could anybody justify a team? Let's talk about your team the Irish losing at home to a team that they shouldn't be losing to in Northern Illinois being ranked ahead of undefeated teams that are in the same structure. They're all division one, a teams. Go ahead. I, I think, first of all, there's been nobody more critical of the Notre Dame after losing that, which I've called the worst loss in program history at home to, to NIU, which is and it's, I can't even fathom how bad that was. That game was, it's ingrained in my brain forever. Um, but I, I think that they lost they, – they were ranked very high at the beginning of the season. Were they six or seven or somewhere in that range? And they go and ha- win a game on the road, SEC school. People say, you know, Kyle Field, the hardest place, place to play in the country. They beat A&M. And then they go and, you know, and drop the, the stinker. But then they go and rebound and you go beat Louisville, who was, you know, ranked 15th, who beat them last year. So it's like in my head – I mean, I think if I was – just not even talking about the – the because I'm a fan – a team that loses a game to a a cupcake, so to speak, at school they paid to play, that you know that was a fluke. And 99 times out of 100, Notre Dame beats Northern Illinois at home. But I think if they drop both those, like what they should be ranked where they are because they beat the the two games, the two tougher opponents that they had in the schedule. Like I think Notre Dame beating A and M and Louisville goes okay. They can actually hang with the with the big boys. If they beat Northern Illinois and drop the two games to those schools, I'm like, well, they're not, they're jokers. They're not for real. So I, I don't, I don't agree with the premise that they should be out of the top 25 because they prove they could beat other really good ranked schools. And they do have some games oh, upcoming that's... versus SC and whatnot. So, I mean, if you think that it just should be based on who's undefeated and you want to go and put BYU and Iowa State and Indiana and UNLV ahead of them, like, okay, do I think the Notre Dame would beat all the schools? I do. So I like, I, I don't, I don't like the rankings are there because it's not, but the bookmakers year, already not, cover that though. Right. The bookmakers will tell us that whatever their, their rankings are. If you look them up in voters who may or may not have seen the game or otherwise have this team ahead of that team, the bookmakers are there theoretically to solve that and tell you who the better team is. Why do we need the double down of the self validation? Cause that's what it is. And where your argument started was, well, Notre Dame started ranked very high. Again, it take the brand away. 
so much of those has to do with past deeds. There's never going to be a situation where Michigan or anybody else wins a national championship and be like, yeah, but we don't know what they're going to do at quarterback. So we're not ranking them right now. They always get the benefit of, and it does create perception, even for those committee members two months from now, when they're gathered around the table, that does impact. They're not robots, they're human beings. And so it permeates your brain that, boy, we, that's been a high-end team all season long where they're ranked. I think it influences people want to claim, I'm not I'm not under any influence like that, but I, I suspect that at least some of them are because, like I say, that's how human I, beings work, even the people who aren't just self-validating. And I think the best example is Michigan, I mean, they yeah, didn't, they didn't gonna lose a game to a ranked team. They got housed by Texas, came in there and whipped mm -hmm. them. What are we talking about? That that team in the same, they're in the Big Ten. And I understand Indiana has not played any powerhouse teams, but we do have evidence. It's sort of like the Matt Millen thing. When people go like, you know, who's out, who's out available to be a general manager of a team right now? Like, well, Matt Millen's done it before. Yeah, we've seen Matt Millen do it and it didn't work out. Why would you give him? I should be a GM before Matt Millen based on track record. That doesn't make any sense to your ear, does it? No, I get it. It's irrational to say that way, but at least we have some evidence. We know Michigan can't hang with Texas. I don't know if Indiana can hang with Texas. Probably not, but we don't know that. What's the point of having these games and a playoff if we if it's predetermined like yeah we already know that team's better than the other team i don't care what their records are it's a weird yeah right you I, follow what i'm saying I, I, yeah and i i think michigan is the one standout of, of this of like because all the rest of the rankings and where the teams are obviously clemson. teams do clemson. Slide, <clears throat> teams slide around yeah clemson's probably a little too high but i i think that like michigan with the quarterback you know issues obviously changing head coach and they lose a bunch of guys at the draft uh, and they get housed by Texas, but then they rebound nicely. They beat USC. You could also say USC is probably ranked too high to begin the season. Now everyone wants to say that um, you know they're gonna they're gonna be great with Lincoln Riley, but their their lack of a defense is is pretty scary. Um, but everyone else, I mean, Ole Miss dropped the game they shouldn't have, but like the Penn State, so the they should so the they Zoos. shouldn't be ahead of an, they shouldn't be ahead of undefeated teams. You just lost to I, Kentucky. What are we talking about? You lost to Kentucky. Kentucky, you didn't lose those good teams. But, I, they're, I didn't they're say they're miserable, but but I just I don't Maryland's agree. Maryland's not miserable. Pitt, be, I mean Pitt, Indiana beat the Maryland head to head. That's a decent win. That what is it? What is not a good loss is losing to Kentucky. That's not a great loss. You should go behind the team that has remained undefeated to this point in the season. And I know I'm touting my team, but I have said this as you know for 20 years at least. But I think if you move, all right, so Ole Miss loses to Kentucky, SEC versus SEC. I know Kentucky has a good defense, uh, good knee line, whatever. The game happened the way it was, bad miss kick to the end. You move Ole Miss, all, who had a very high win total too and has a, a, a great head coach and Lane Kevin, people love him. And I, I think, uh, you know, they, they are a popular pick to go over their win total. You move them out of the top 25 and they, they, they're ranked in the 30s, the 40s, whatever. You're basically just punishing them over the top be, to prove a point. I just don't think every undefeated, like UNLV being undefeated, I don't think they're better than than Ole Miss. So that's the reason why I don't care that Ole Miss is ranked where they are because I know it's still right. I, the rankings are basically projections of where the people feel collectively feel about where these teams are. And it, having the playoff this year does help that to get the most amount of teams in. But I think to be like, okay, well, Georgia lost to Alabama in a classic. Let's move Georgia all the way out of here. It's like, you're out of your mind. Georgia would beat all these other okay, teams. I, I, I don't want to quibble about Georgia and I'm not trying to allow that to offset my larger point, but it is so much of what you're saying is, is the impression you have and had before the season started. Jackson Dart is great. Um, Lane Kiffin is great. And there's a lack of confidence. You're not one of the voters, obviously, um, in determining this. But what you're saying reflects exactly what they're thinking. Like, yeah, but, I mean, come on, Ole Miss. I mean, they're better than Indiana, right? Like, what are we doing? Of course, what are we, they are. Put Indiana ahead of them? Yeah, then it'll play out that way. If, if, if Ole Miss gets to November at 8-1, and 9-1, and one, whatever, at the, like that – they will rise up above Indiana, who presumably will lose a couple of games and all will be right in the world. It's just a weird thing to establish that like, yeah, we knew this. It's some weird predictive thing that people want. That, uh, again, it's about the self-validation of like, I had that team there and I want it to be true all through the season. Sort of like we talk about you and Hench both had the Steelers 
making the playoffs. I didn't. Um, I'm not going to root against the Steelers, but you probably have a little more interest in seeing the Steelers succeed to be able to say you're right. That makes you a human being. I Same I, logic applies here. If I'm a voter and I'm saying like, yeah, but I know Ole Miss is good and I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock them out of the top 25 just because they lost to a team that's not very good. But then if they go and beat, if Ole Miss goes and beats another really good ranked team, another SEC school, and they have, and then they're supposed to skyrocket back up. Like that, that's why yeah. I just think if they drop X amount of spots, like they, they drop six spots in the poll, I think that's fine. If the, because it doesn't make any sense to me to drop them 40 spots and they get a win and go, okay, you're back up 30 spots. That's, that's insane. There's no, then I'd rather just not have the polls at all. But then the problem yes. is, but college football has never been equal anyway. It's still not equal. It's a mess. We have the NIL thing like, for all the good it does with, with getting uh, kids paid, which I, we're all happy about. It's causing a mess. Look at UNLV. And then you or, or you have a school like Ohio State spending more than NFL teams do on their roster. It's insane. Or, you know, then getting rid of these conferences and losing all the rivalries. Now you have USC and UCLA traveling across the country, Stanford traveling across the country. It, it's also asinine. And and now with the with the playoff, like, we, at least we're getting more teams into the dance to give them the opportunity to win. So if your Hoosiers do somehow go undefeated, they're obviously going to get a chance to go and play there. Whereas years ago, if they went undefeated, then people would still be like, well, two lost Alabama had a better schedule than Indiana. So like, we're still going to put Alabama in because we like having Alabama play. Like at least we're getting, that's fair. Like at least this year we're getting the fairness of the 12 teams and we're going to give, you know, schools that are outside like the power conferences a chance. And I, I think that's, that's in a school like Notre Dame that doesn't play in a conference. They have to, they have to play a first round playoff game. Like that's the one good thing that we're doing right now. So if we have to I live, agree. If we're living with these rankings, I, I, I'm I guess because in my brain I know that because all Miss lost to Kentucky, they're an awful school. No, are they as good as Alabama? Probably not, but I don't think they deserve to be out of the top twenty five because of a loss. So I, I just like I also don't really care that much about the rankings. I don't know why it like it chaps your ass so much, but it's like to to because call I know it in, but here's why. Here's what here's 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 why it does is because. I, I get that at this point they largely serve to hype teams and it makes something sound even better. Like this is two versus four. What a showdown. Or like, boy, we've got a top 10 team coming into town. All that benefits, you know, the, the profile of the game and promotes the sport a little bit. But let's say that Michigan loses one more game along the way to Ohio state as a, for instance, or, maybe even two games the rest of the way, including Ohio state, Indiana's schedule sets up. I'm not saying they're going to do it, you know, minus 13 on the road this weekend at Northwestern. That's heady stuff. If you're uh, a Hoosiers fan for any amount of time for them to be laying double digit points on the road is wild in a big 10 game. But let's say that the Hoosiers do run the table up until they get Michigan and they lose to Michigan in Bloomington. If, that would be their one loss. And Michigan had two losses or even three. There would be, I suspect, support for Michigan to make the playoff over Indiana that would not exist the other way around. If Indiana beat Michigan and that was their big quality win of the year, you wouldn't look at Indiana and say like, well, they belong in the playoff. I know they have two or three losses and Michigan only has one, but they beat them head to head. We should put Indiana in there. That would not apply there, but it would the other way. I know I'm hypothesizing that that's the case, but I suspect I'm right. Well, I, I, I think the, the problem with, I mean, like to talk about Indiana specifically, the only shot they have is to go undefeated because if they lose to Michigan and Ohio state, and it's possible they could beat Michigan. Cause I don't think Michigan's very good. And I think Michigan I also think so. has Michigan also has the ability to lose probably three or four games this year because they have Oregon on the schedule. They have Ohio state, like you mentioned um, Illinois as well, who's ranked um, and plus the Indiana. But I, I think, you know, like what's if Indiana drops their two biggest games, like what's their quality victory? Like, I mean, at UCLA beating Nebraska at Washington like what's like so like that's that's how I look at it where it's like if you don't have the qual the, the win that's why in a weird way I'm not even trying to like help out Notre Dame's cause but dropping a Mac game uh, at home is a fluke is a it's a complete it's a colossal mess up but then you go and take care of business versus the ranked teams that you're going to be when everyone every year goes join the conference beat the good te beat the teams that are th that are good oh their schedule is so easy blah, blah blah and then you go and beat those teams but then you you f up the one thing that you shouldn't have which is a, a 
a shoe in victory. So that's why, like, again, like with, with Indiana being ranked where they are, it's basically saying like, okay, you haven't lost yet, but you haven't really been challenged yet. So like, I, again, like I'm, I'm okay where, where, where it is. And if they somehow beat Michigan only lose to Ohio state and they're playing in a big 10 schedule and they only have one loss, like, should they be a top 12 team? Like, I probably wouldn't argue against it. I, I think they they did what they had to do, and that's the whole point of this expanded playoff. Is but don't you see? Don't you see three hours difference between Bloomington, Indiana, and South Bend, Indiana, and it's a world different. And you just explained that Notre this Dame beat A and M and Louisville, and they I have know. USC on the schedule. Uh, uh, right, but this is exactly the conversation we had. Whatever it was, DJU's rookie uh, rookie freshman season seventeen years ago. You and I had that when he showed up in South Bend and had the great game uh, for Clemson um, when Trevor Lawrence was down in that one. And I remember talking to you about this. The, it's good to play quality teams. You benefit from strength of schedule, but merely playing good teams is not enough in my book. Like if they, I hear you, if they're, if they have zero quality wins then they have zero quality wins, but I think teams get a lot of bang, a lot of bang out of like, Hey, they, they played Michigan played USC and they, they, you know, by the way, obviously the big 10 plays the big 10. And so you get, I think if you show up in these games against tough foes and you don't win very many of them, I don't know how much value that has. I'm going to say that's Notre Dame's case, but if Michigan, like, what are we going to do? If they are three lost team, you're going to say, yeah, but the teams they lost to are all good. Yeah. We've already seen them lose to those teams. You're going to put them back in the mix. You're going to have them play Oregon and Ohio state. And otherwise, again, even though we already just saw them get ham and Texas of all the teams that should be in the playoff. One thing we don't need in it is the one that we already have the result for. We saw how they play against those teams head to head. Not well, you can't put them in the playoff. Okay. But if, it, if it plays out that way. So even we take the top teams and just look at their schedules, there's a chance that every top team has a blemish on their record. You, you, I mean, Alabama is playing Tennessee. They also have Missouri and LSU and Oklahoma, and they have the Iron Bowl at the end. You never know with that game. So there's easy. I'm sorry, I got to interrupt you because you, you just, I, I have a short term uh, memory problem. And you mentioned Tennessee. That's the team. And I, I shouted out our guy Sully the other day in mentioning this Tennessee fan. Um, even the Vols fans should be a little miffed right now. They're, why are they behind Georgia? They haven't played Bama yet. We don't know what the result of that game's going to be. We know what the result Georgia. is. In the AP, they're four. Georgia's five. Oh, they jump past. Okay. I yeah, stand so down. it's, it's, uh, stand so down. it's okay. Alabama, Texas, Ohio State, Tennessee, Georgia, okay. Oregon, Penn State, Miami. Well, then that's Michigan. right. I'd be mad if I were Penn State, too. They already I, lost. Why, 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 why are we behind that team? We're undefeated. Why would we be behind anybody we, we haven't lost a game yet because it's saying that if georgia and penn state played at a neutral site georgia would most likely win let alone georgia playing at if georgia was home versus penn state how many points would penn state be getting i even think georgia would probably still be giving points if they went to to happy valley so that's kind of what the the rankings are saying and plus it's you know in a way like but back to my point i think like penn state's another good example they could lose to ohio state ohio state has plenty of games where they could lose too. texas has games where they could lose they're they're playing georgia they're playing a and they're playing oklahoma uh, was it uh, when, uh, next week? So there's all, all these top teams that are ranked uh, that they all could have a loss. Uh, so it, it's like, uh, if we start banishing teams from the top 25 because of a loss, we're going to be left with nobody or just the teams that really don't play anyone that's, that's that tough. So I, I don't, I disagree. I mean, I, it will shake out. That's the point is that if you have confidence that that team's good, they're going to rise back up when they get some quality wins. They're Miami. obviously going to vault past the team that don't have any quality wins. Miami's probably the best chance at uh, an undefeated schedule just because they their hardest game left is, is Louisville uh, on the road. So I, I just feel like they, they are the, the team that can probably do it. They're ranked eighth right now. Like I don't know, I'm not saying that Texas or Bama or Oregon or Tennessee cannot run the table and go undefeated, but when you have a three or four ranked games on your schedule is a tough schedule. I, I just feel like the, all the top teams that we're talking about are all going to have a blemish of some sort. And then you're basically just sorting through like the quality of victory, the quality of the loss, even like where was the loss. And I, I think that's kind of where the rankings have to play a part. So I'm, I'm not, I, I think the rankings are completely fine because it doesn't really change my thought process on this, on, on like, Georgia losing does not make me think that UNLV or Indiana is better or BYU is better if, or Iowa State I is guess, better. 
I guess it invalidates the value of the polls, which I guess is fine this early into the season. But what you're saying, like uh, it, what 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 you're getting at, basically, is it's a double down on what the bookmakers are already telling us. We can I I know who's supposed to win these games. I know who's supposed to be playing in in the tournament when it gets going. It doesn't mean that that will be the reality. And I think people are steering by with their votes, and well, they lost, but kind of thing just just entrenches that that team's going to make the playoffs no matter what happens unless they really lose four games or something like that all that being said michigan at washington this weekend at washington laying two and a half boy what a gut punch that is to the wolverines against the huskies you're you're uh getting points and i think we want michigan to win that one so that when indiana beats them it's a more of a quality win to to your point i hope all your teams win i'm rooting for pitt um, to take down the Tar Heels because I think that that would put them into the top 20. Quick pick from you, Eddie Spaghetti. Iowa at Ohio State, the Buckeyes laying 20. Total is 45. Those two things don't align. So wait, the one team's going to beat the other team by more, hmm. than, by, by basically three touchdowns or more, but the total of the game's going to be 45. I know it's Iowa involved in this, but how do you see that one going? I could see a lot of a lot of puns from Iowa, not a lot of points from Iowa. I wouldn't be shocked if Iowa ends this game in the single digit points. They're most likely going to probably, you know, 10, 13 point range. But um, like I mentioned before, Ohio State spent you know, what upwards of 20 something million on their roster. Um, they have one of the best you know receivers in the country. Uh, you know, Will Howard's been fine for them. So I, I just think that they're. Uh, their, their team is they're loaded. Uh, they have a very good chance of going undefeated as well. But I think they're going to be in the conversation at least in the they'll at least be the final four team this year. And I just think that it's another beatdown of a uh, a conference rival here.